Hello everyone, thanks again for joining me on my research adventures and today I'm going to visit the Susanna Place Museum which is part of the Living Museum series of museums here in Sydney I guess. Um, I'm not exactly sure if I'm able to take you in with me as it's a guided tour um, but I'm going to try my best to show off as much as I can and uh, hopefully you enjoy my adventures today. about the Susanna Place Museum to talk a little bit about Cumberland Place which just happens to be right next to the main entrance of the museum which is down here. Now I've been doing quite a bit of research into a family that lived on Cumberland Place who was called first of all the Hines family so it was Thomas Hines who owned the property and then he gifted that after his death to his wife Lucy Hines who then became Lucy Purves. Now we have her sheet music collections here at the Sydney Living Museums and I've been exploring quite a lot about the sheet music and um, what she put, seems to have put together in Whitehaven in Cumberland uh, in England. Now Lucy, when she was known, was Lucy Havens as her maiden name. She was born in Scotland to a, an English father and a Scottish mother who was born in Fife. And she seems to have come to Australia in 1839 where she first married Thomas Hines and then married her second husband, Reverend William Purves. So that's just a little detour into some of the research that I've been carrying out. If you want to know more about that, then please go and visit my blog, which is researchadventuresblog.wordpress.com. Um, but a little bit more from me and from the Susanna Place Museum in a moment. So I've been doing a lot of exploring of the rocks area and one of the main things I've been really intrigued about is the Big Dig project. Now this is an archaeology project that is digging up parts of the city and uncovering some of the old remains that live beneath the ground. So in here it's not too far from the main road but you can see that they have preserved all of the underneath areas and what it looked like. And if we continue down They've continued to do that and you can see little dugout areas like this are all fenced off throughout the city and then they have quite detailed information plaques about what they have uncovered. So one of the most interesting things that I've discovered about the rocks area, which is where I am today, is that there was a bubonic plague outbreak in the early 20th century and this led to a number of properties being basically pulled down and demolished um, because of fear of the plague getting into more of the city. So if we turn up here there is an education centre all to do with the Big Dig project but there's also more information on the buponic plague. And here it tells us that in 1902 James Foy who was aged 18 uh, died in Little Bay Hospital after contracting the bubonic plague. So some gruesome stuff indeed, but it's quite interesting to hear about the a little part of Sydney, which is just off to the side of the main city centre, and all of the development work that they are doing to really preserve its heritage. I'm excited to hear even more.
Liz, I've just finished at the Susanna Place Museum and it was really quite interesting. They've got a good amount of history from 1844 when the property was first built all the way through to the early 1990s when it was passed over as a museum. I'm just going to dash off really quickly because there's a storm brewing above me and there's lots of thunder going off. Um, so what I would like you to do is to subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment about what you'd like to see next. Bye! tour of the Susanna Place Museum and that's because I felt at the end of the last one it was just a little bit rushed partly because the storm was coming in and if you don't believe me then see the previous shot. Uh, so I found the tour really interesting and um, we went through the four different terrace properties and the guide was able to explain to us the different families that had lived there and um, who they were and she really took us on a history tour from the earliest days that the properties were built in 1844 all the way through to when the final tenants moved out in 1990. Now unfortunately the guide wasn't really that effective and um, she often would stutter on her words kind of like I'm doing now um, but you could see that she was really thinking about what she was going to say next and thinking about the material that she was going to say next so it wasn't that dynamic. Um, in terms of guiding, um, but I understand that it's volunteers who all take the opportunity to be part of this, so you're maybe going to get a mixed bunch depending on who volunteers to be part of the programme. And um, what I will say is that one of the most interesting things about the tour was that you got to see pictures of the families that had lived in these homes and they told us oral histories of the people who had lived there, either from the people themselves or if they'd passed away from family members. So you were able to really get a nice dynamic view of the people who had once lived in the properties. So I would definitely recommend the museum. It's not anything that I've ever seen before. It's not anything that I've seen in Britain before. Um, so if you're coming to Sydney, then don't miss out on this one. It is a little bit off to the side and you might not think of going up to the rocks to go and see it because it's in the middle of a little cul-de-sac, um, but definitely watch out for it. Thank you.